Today we are on the hunt to find British foods in all of the American grocery stores or supermarkets that we can find. We'll take you around to a few stores, see what the selection is like, and how the prices stuck up to the prices in the UK. Our first stop is Publix. Now this is actually a store that we purchased British goods at before we ever went to England. So now that we've been to England, I'm interested to see how it stacks up to the prices that we've seen there and just the selection that they have compared to what we've actually experienced in the UK. They got the BOGO deals. <laughs> I haven't been to a Publix in a minute. Got all the BOGO deals. <laughs> yeah, this is like one of the highlights of, of Publix in general is that they have buy one get one free savings. Everything else is really expensive, but you know, those BOGOs are a good deal. International foods. This is a pretty large store, and this is what we're working with. They have Rabina, $6.29. I don't think I've ever seen this in an American grocery store before. Looks like they have a pretty good selection of snacks and things. I mean, they're not cheap. The day that we're filming this, uh, the exchange rate is, I think, $1 is about 82p and one pound is $1.22. So these are, I mean, you're, you're, you're paying to import them here. <laughs> I like that they're like, you save. 90 cents on McVitie's hobnobs. I mean, it's good that they are the chocolate flavored hobnobs because I think those are one of the better ones. 3.69 for a sleeve of jammy Dodgers. <laughs> wow. They got some jelly babies. Those, I think those are, not those are the brand that we initially tried and I think people told us to get them the what's it called Maynard's yeah. there's a different Maynard's brand and, and I think yeah. they're better yeah quick question for you if you were to visit another country for a long term which is something that we're gonna be doing and we have to consider what is one thing that you would definitely not want to live without. What is one thing that would be hard to be in another country that you'd be worth worth paying the price to uh, have it? I think, I think a lot of people would probably say Heinz beans. I, I think, but I don't know. For me, goldfish crackers. I love goldfish. Not only do they have Heinz beans here, they are three dollars and 99 cents which seems pretty ouch <laughs> but also they have the bachelor's brand baked beans which i don't think i've ever seen in an american grocery store before i've seen the mushy peas before but not the be the beans i enjoy that they have a yorkshire pudding mix for three dollars and 19 cents they've got some of the the jacobs crackers that we've tried before oh are these the the what people were telling us were squash fly biscuits <laughs> They have my favorite thing. This is probably my favorite treat in the UK. Nice caramel tonics wafer biscuit. Isn't a violet crumble Australian and not British? <laughs> I'm on to you, Publix. I'm on to you. There is a British equivalent of it, and I forget what it's called. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. But, but they, they have a different, like something similar. Something similar, but it's different. But it is not a Violet Crumble. No. <laughs> also, this Coffee Crisp says it's Canadian, so there's also that. I also have to say one thing that still kind of confuses me. Like, a lot of these things are snacks, and so because they're snacks, we've tried them before. But a lot of them are things that are just, like, condiments and complimentary things that I don't, I still don't know what you serve them with. Like, what do you have with mint sauce? we kind of know like the Branson pickle I ate one on my own by itself and apparently you're supposed to have it as a complimentary thing but I just feel like there's a lot of things like salad cream like do you have it with salad like what is the situation we do not carry salad cream other than in this spot in the British store here I think our friend told us that the salad cream goes on sandwiches but we have not even tasted it yet <laughs> but to taste it here it would cost 6.29 so there's that as a side note i think in the uk we found many stores have much better ready meals than we have here in the us except for publix publix has some some great ready meals we came we saw the tiny british section let's go check out another grocery store one that i don't think i've ever actually been to um but that i've heard has a pretty good selection of british british things 
so we'll see what they have and if it's any better prices than here. We're now at Kroger, which is kind of an interesting difference between the US and the UK is that we have very regional grocery stores. So Kroger owns a number of different grocery stores across the US. We've never actually been to a Kroger, but like where I'm from in the Pacific Northwest, we have Fred Meyer. Where Jeremy's from in Utah, he has Smith's. They're all under the Kroger brand, but they are different grocery stores. There's basically like chains of grocery stores here that have different brands in different regions, which I, I don't think we've ever really noticed in the UK. Like M&S is just M&S everywhere. Uh, Tesco has like Tesco Extra and like offshoots, but like they're all Tesco's. It's just interesting that, that that's different from uh, what we've experienced in other places. This Kroger looks different from any grocery stores I've been to in the US. It's sort of weird and long? Yeah. <laughs> is that a weird description <laughs> no, of the store? Accurate, accurate. What you find in? Dollar needle balls, I guess. <laughs> oh. They are no pot noodle, I'll tell you that much. It feels dark in here compared to Publix. It does, yeah. Maybe the Latin American Isle? I don't know. Maybe they don't have a British Isle here. <laughs> Maybe we're in the re wrong region of Kroger even. They have a Caribbean section, kosher section. And they have the best barbecue joint around. This is a bit of a bust. They don't appear to have a British section yeah, here. There was like a Caribbean section and a Latin American section, an Asian section, but no UK section. But hey, we can cross off going to a Kroger off the list. We've Fair. never been to a Kroger. On to the next place. Let's see what else we can find. It is kind of funny. Jeremy just pointed out that um, a lot of times we see people from the UK come to America and they go to Walmart. Like, that's an experience. And now we're coming to Walmart, but it's to find British food. So that adds a, a layer of fun, doesn't it? It is kind of funny that, yeah, we've seen our friends and just videos of people that have come to the US from the UK and Walmart is on their list most of the time. So can we find UK food in Walmart? I mean, aside from finding UK food or not, it, it is an experience. <laughs> they have an international food aisle where we find what we're looking for. I swear that we've come to Walmarts before and that they've had at least Heinz beans, but they don't even appear to have that at this one. We even came to the bean section, but there's no Heinz beans. I guess I understand why you guys come here to get American food and not food from home. I am a little bit surprised by the lack of British things here in Atlanta because specifically in the area we've been staying in, we've seen a lot of things that have names like Old England Lake and things like that. So I just, yeah, I just feel like there should be more selection here. But I guess we've also done this more in Florida where there definitely is a better selection there than there has been here today. Yeah, and a lot of it was Publix, which we were successful at Publix. So. <laughs> Fair, well maybe we should try another Publix. Maybe. I mean, here in Atlanta, we have come across a cafe that serves Costa coffee and I think a, a Wagamama. So I'm surprised that there's not things in the grocery store. It is a weird thing that every Walmart we go to now is just like mostly self-checkout kiosks. It's a strange future world we're living in. But that does make remind me of something that I think is really interesting about the UK grocery stores is that a lot of them, I think most of them, have people sitting at the checkout. And in here in the US, we make people stand, which I think is just rude. Like, why not give them a chair? They're just checking all day. Our next stop should have some British food because we've come to downtown Marietta, Georgia, which is just a lovely, cute little downtown area. But there is a British store here called The Corner Shop. And we are sure to find some British foods in there. Hopefully they allow filming inside. And, and ho I'm assuming that because they're a small business that the prices are gonna be high, but I don't know if they're gonna be any higher than Publix. I honestly don't. Yeah, I kinda of doubt it, honestly. <laughs> they're gonna have a better selection, that's for sure. 
They have a great selection of crisps, including some, I, like, I don't think we've tried these Disco's cheese and onion before. I might have to get some of those. And honestly, $1.89, not, not terrible prices. They have such an amazing selection of Easter things. So many of these giant Easter eggs, like this is as many as we saw in Tesco when we were in the UK. If we were to get an Easter egg, which one should we get? There's a lot of choices. They all seem to be about like nine to fifteen dollars. Oh, well, these are cute. I like the one that has a unicorn on it. This cream egg is one large cream egg with oh, it's just one giant cream egg. No, it's one hollow chocolate big egg with one regular sized cream egg in it. Oh. That's deceiving. Yes. $3.99. Multiple sizes of Marmite. $10.99. Same price. Same price as Publix. They have the weird peanut butter you bought and you tried and... I liked it. Did you? Yeah. Okay. I made some sandwiches with it. It was pretty good. Okay. How much are the Heinz beans? $2.39. That's pretty good. Curry ones. Yeah, the curry ones. They have no sugar added to. Even the individual cream eggs because we do have them here. They're not as good. They're not as good. But these are also not very much more expensive than the American ones that we can get here, and they're better. Are you gonna get a cream egg? I'm gonna get a caramel cream egg. I bet I'll love it. You know, I see a bar I don't think we've ever tried before. I don't think we've ever tried a double decker. Have we ever tried one before? I don't know, I don't think so. Maybe we'll have to get one of those. Yes, my favorite, Parma Violets. Dollar twenty-five. That's it. Dollar twenty-five. It's worth it to me. The hobnobs seem to range for from four ninety-nine to five forty-nine, depending on the the type. Oh, sticky toffee pudding. I don't think we've ever had sticky toffee pudding, have we? No. Oh, we have. We have. Uh oh. <laughs> We're pretty good. Five ninety-nine for solid cream. They have a much better selection of tea here too. I love that they also have an amazing selection of frozen goods, including things like Mr. Kipling treats and clotted cream. Well, that place was amazing. Uh, ended up with $32 worth of stuff, which we're gonna go back to our Airbnb and try. Uh, one thing that I thought was amazing is that the prices in there were actually really reasonable, wouldn't you say? Yeah, they really weren't bad at all. Uh, I mean, they weren't cheap, but a lot of it was the same price as Publix. Some of it was cheaper. Definitely cheaper than the place we used to go to in Florida, yeah. though. And a really good selection of stuff. There is a British shop that we used to go to in Orlando when we lived there, and those prices were astronomical compared to this shop. So I was expecting this place to be a lot more expensive than it was. Um, it was very, very reasonable, and uh, the lady working in there was lovely. She's from Worcestershire, so that's that's fun. One sad thing, there's this uh, Australian bakery that um, I think one of your friends recommended to us, but sadly it's closed today. Yeah, they have like meat pies and I think pasties and stuff along with the Australian things. And I was told they were really good, so we might have to try and come back. The other sad thing is that uh, the woman in the British store was telling us that basically things like clotted cream and scones, whenever they come in, they immediately sell out. So they didn't have any clotted cream, which is sad for me. But uh, we, we're gonna try some things that we've never tried before. We have made it back to our Airbnb. Uh, let us show you what we got today. We have potato, beef and onion. Never tried these before. Disco's cheese and onion. I don't think we've tried this flavor before. We have three Cadbury bars that we've never tried before. Timeout wafer, a picnic, and a double decker. Jeremy thinks we maybe have tried this, but I'm not I'm not sure. I don't remember. The candy bars range in price from $1.79 to $1.99. When we went to the UK for the first time a year ago, uh, it was around Easter, and so they had all of the Easter eggs in the stores when we were there. We didn't get any though, so I'm excited that we are going to try one now. We ended up uh, picking out is the Cadbury mini eggs one. This was $12.99, and this is the one that I am the least confident about how much better of a deal or how much worse of a deal it is than in the UK, but overall the store seemed like it had pretty good prices, so I think 
think it's probably not too terrible. I think when we tried Bear Breath in Wales, people had told us to try this. The person at the store, she basically said she had one loaf left and it was the best thing ever, so we, we picked it up. A Soarin Malt Loaf. Deliciously Squidgy Energy. Jeremy just said it was $4. It is vegan approved. Although we were told we have to have it with butter, so it will not be vegan approved with how we're about to try it. On a side note, in our Paris video, um, we got a, quite a few comments from you guys about having a sandwich with butter on it. If you're American, leave a comment and let us know if you eat butter on a sandwich or not because I don't know that I ever have, really. I don't think it's a thing here like it is in Europe. Now I'm gonna try this. You don't hate it, but you don't love it either. It has a very weird consistency that I think if we got this more fresh in the UK, that maybe it wouldn't have. It's like very thick and um, like fudgy almost. It's it's a weird consistency, but it's pleasant. It's like, um, yeah, I think it kind of does taste like bear breath. Like it's, it's kind of similar. There are, I think some like candied fruits in there, but I don't really taste them but it's, it's pleasant. Like that consistency has to be from being frozen, right? I think part of it just might be what it's made out of though too. Oh. It's different. Um, I don't dislike it. It does sort of have fruit cake like notes sort of, but not super strong. I don't know, it's interesting. I would eat more of it, but it's also not my favorite. So I think potatoes are technically Irish. So not UK technically but uh, we've had some of the other ones, but I don't think we've ever had beef and onion. So I thought, here we go. They're fine, they're nice, I don't know. They're, I feel like they don't have as much flavor as some of the other ones we've had, but they taste kind of beefish. Beefish, <laughs> that's a word apparently, but um, yeah, they're not bad. I like Tato. They're Isn't Tato the one that's made in a castle? I think so, yeah, made in a castle. They used to have a theme park and I think it's closed now. Give these uh, cheese and onion discos a whirl. It's been a while since we've had a disco. They're, they're pretty good and just eating this makes me realize that cheese and onion is really a top tier crisp flavor that we don't have here and I miss cheese and onion. These are pretty good. And I agree with Jeremy that cheese and onion are such a superior, we have sour cream and onion here in the US. Or sour cream and cheddar. Sour cream and cheddar. We have both of them. I, I think the cheddar is, just doesn't taste very good cheese like. I just think, yeah, I agree. Cheese and onion is perfect. Also, I feel like the only discos I've had so far I haven't liked, so hopefully this is one I like. They're almost like a, a thicker Pringle. Kinda, yeah. This double decker is a little melty looking. We've had it before? I think we've had it before. It's kind of got like a marshmallowy top and some crispies in it. It's pretty good. It's not my favorite candy bar, but it's it's good. It's nice. I'm like making a mess of this double decker, which is very nougaty. <laughs> but it's good. I like the the crispies are quite crunchy, and I like that about it. That timeout almost looks like um like a Kit Kat. It feels lighter, like less dense, like like a wafer cookie or something covered in chocolate. It's like a lighter Kit Kat or like I said, a wafer cookie that's dipped in chocolate. It's it's nice. It's crispy and airy on the inside. I like that pretty well. You know those, um, the wafer cookies that have the layer of frosting in them? That's what I meant initially when I was talking oh, about it. Yeah, that's what they taste like. They're like more light and airy. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just repeating exactly what you said. That's lovely. I don't know that I've ever come across a Time Out wafer before from Cadbury, but... It's nice. That's a good one. That's a good one. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that I'm probably gonna end up eating the rest of this because I think it has raisins in it. I thought I saw raisins <laughs> in there. <laughs> I don't think Kara's gonna be all that excited about it. Yeah, this one just kind of looks like a baby Ruth, but with more than just nuts. It does sort of remind me of a baby Ruth, kind of, because it's got the peanuts and like sort of a chewy center, but there's also some crunchies and some raisins. So yeah, that's actually pretty good. I like that. There's so much else going on in here. There's like little crispies, there's like nuts. 
There's peanuts. so much happening that you can't even tell there's raisins in it. And therefore, I like it. And just because I have this new weird addiction to them, I got some giant permaviolets for $1.25. And a pot noodle, a Bombay bad boy pot noodle for, I think this was $3.99. I think the price tag fell off of it. It seems pretty pricey, especially when you consider the fact that in just a few weeks, we will be back in the UK and this time for a longer period of time. So we're gonna be able to partake in all of the pot noodles and parma violets that I can handle. I know, you're so excited. You get to go with us this time, huh? Mm. Yeah, it's so exciting. We are gonna be bringing our dog with us and uh, exploring not just the UK, but some of Europe. We are gonna be flying into France uh, just so that our dog does not have to go in cargo um, because if you fly into the UK, um, she has to go in cargo. So she's gonna fly with us in the cabin to France and then we are gonna take the train to Calais and then we are going to uh, take the channel. We're gonna get picked up by a taxi and uh, go over to the UK via the channel. So we got lots of fun planned. We got a lot of stuff we don't have planned, but we will be back in the UK very soon and I'm very excited about it. So let us know if uh, there are any places that you would like us to see. And if you are interested in us doing a meetup somewhere, you know, throw, throw out a couple ideas for places that you think we should do a meetup because we've gotten a lot of requests about it and I think this time we'll have a little bit more time. We could actually do it. Carly says, Thank you to our patrons for supporting our channel. Thank you for watching our video and we'll see you soon in a new country where I get to go. Here's my treat now.